Okay, so um, if we have this ball, 1.5 kilograms, and it's 0 0.8 meters above the ground, um, what we want to find is at some point when this ball falls, um, somewhere in between, we have both kinetic and potential energy. Right now at the bottom, uh, we have zero potential and zero kinetic because it's not moving. Um, but back up here at the top, we had all potential energy and no kinetic because our kinetic energy is zero since our velocity is zero. If our velocity is zero, that means that uh, our energy is zero. And that's because if we look at our formula uh, for, um, for kinetic energy, one half mv squared, if all of the velocity is zero, well these are all multiplying, so if we're multiplying something by zero, then the energy must be zero. So if our velocity is zero, then our kinetic energy is zero. So we can, we can quickly see how velocity is directly related to our kinetic energy. Because we have a height of 0 0.8 meters, uh, we can find the total potential energy at this point uh, simply by uh, taking our um, height and multiplying it by the mass and gravity. Okay, so we can go 1.5 kilograms and 9.81 meters per second squared, and that's an acceleration factor, and then our height, which is 0 0.8 meters. Okay, and so that equals one point five times nine point eight one times uh, point eight eleven point seven seven two and with significant digits when we round that um, because we we're only limited to two digits actually only one digit um, uh, I'll make this uh, put an extra zero in here, but uh, we'll just say it's two digits. So we can round that to 12 uh, joules. So 12 joules. Uh, so let's put, increase our accuracy 0 0.80, and over here, uh, that's 0 0.80. Okay, so uh, we have 12 joules of energy sitting here at the top, and that is EP top. And we can find the kinetic energy at the bottom, right here, because when this moves down there, all of our uh, potential energy has been converted from uh, from potential energy into kinetic energy, and this is right before it hits the floor. Okay, so this is the the moment right before impact. Uh, so our kinetic energy now is at maximum, and so now we can use uh, this formula: e k equals one half m v squared, and um, we can find the velocity because we know that it's twelve joules here. If this is if this one is zero then this one is 12 joules, and if this one is zero, then this is 12 joules. Right now, we are ignoring this Q thing. Uh, this Q is, is based on our efficiency calculations, so we're just gonna ignore that for now. Um, but we do lose some energy due to heat and sound as it falls through the air. Um, but for now, we're just gonna ignore that. And we're just looking at uh, kinetic and potential energy. And so if we transfer all of our potential energy into kinetic energy, now this guy is zero, so it essentially disappears, and so now all of our total energy is kinetic energy. So that's this guy right here, and so if I have kinetic energy equals one half mv squared, that means I've got 12 joules equals one half mv squared. Now I've got this organized very poorly, um, but 
what happens is we just do a little bit of rearranging and some algebra. We put our mass of 1.5 in, in here. I'm just going to transfer it back down here and say 12 joules. I'm going to multiply it by 2 to cancel off uh, this factor of 1 half. And then I'm going to divide by m, which is 1.5 kilograms. And that equals my velocity squared. And if I take the square root of this whole thing, then that gives me my velocity. So then my velocity equals 12 times 2, which is 24, divided by 1.5. Uh, so that's going to give us uh, 16. So 24 divided by 1.5 equals 16. And if we take the square root of 16, we get 4. Uh, so our velocity is 4.0 meters per second, right before it hits the floor. Um, so that answers that question. Now, what about somewhere in between? So if I were to say, what is the... Um, height at which the ball has an energy has a velocity sorry a velocity of 2.5 meters per second so the height equals what when the velocity is 2.5 we know that the velocity here was 0 and the velocity down here is 4 so it's going to be somewhere in between. So let's just visually just approximate it. And so if this is half, it's going to be, you know, maybe right here somewhere. Okay, so let's see what we can do. So uh, we know that our total energy in a system equals our kinetic plus our potential. If I were to take my... Uh, find my kinetic energy at 2.5 meters per second, then I could find the total energy, and then I could find, uh, sorry, I don't, I already know the total energy in the system is 12 joules. This is my total energy in a system. I can't have more than 12 joules ever in this system. Um, so I can find the kinetic energy, and then subtract it from the total, and that'll give me my potential, and I can do the math, rearrange, and I can find the height, and that's the answer to our question. So uh, we know that we've got 12 joules of total and my kinetic energy is one half. My mass is 1.5 kilograms and my velocity is 2.5 meters per second all squared. And then I'm going to add some potential energy into that. All right, so if I just work out that kinetic energy factor, um, uh, so I got uh, 0.5 times 1.5 times, you can do 2.5 squared or just 2.5 times 2.5. On, on, my, on the computer calculator, sometimes that's easier. So my energy at that point is 4.6875. Now, if this were a final answer, we would have to round it using significant digits. Uh, but being that it's a, an in-between, an intermediate answer, we're just going to leave it exactly like that. So 4.6875, 6, what was it? 6875 joules plus my potential energy. Now, this is what I'm trying to find, so I'm just going to rearrange it over here. And uh, technically it's a negative, but the way that I'm rearranging, I'm going to negate the whole equation, and so I'm going to have 12 joules minus 4.6875 joules. And so my Potential energy equals, um, let's just store that in my memory, 
and say 12 minus memory recall equals 7.3125 joules. Okay, so now I know the energy at that point, and now I can um, put that number over here. Oops, that's a 3, 3, 1, 2, 5 joules equals mgh. Well, guess what? I know m and I know g, so now I can easily solve for h. I'm going to rearrange it right now. I'm going to say h equals 7.3125 joules divided by mg and when I plug in those numbers 7.3125 joules divided by 1.5 kilogram mass and 9.81 meters per second squared for my gravity um, so I can go divided by 1.5 and I'm also going to divide it by 9.81 and so my height 0 0.4969 so 0 0.4 we'll just say 497 meters or uh, to two digits 0 0.50 meters now look at our original problem we said the whole thing was 0 0.8 meters and so our height was 0 0.5 meters and so it's actually a little bit higher than than what we found here but that's okay this was just an estimate and now we know that when the ball is traveling at 2.5 meters per second it is at a height of 0 0.5 meters